Hello and welcome to the video for sixth grade for Wednesday, April the 15th. Uh, this is going to be covering the homework from lesson 10.9, uh, where we were working with putting figures on the coordinate plane and being able to find the length of different sides of a shape. So let's go ahead and take a look at our problem. So um, I assigned the even numbers for this. So number two, what they wanted us to start with was to go ahead and put the points on the coordinate plane. And then we are trying to figure out what the length of this particular section of the figure would be. So there are two different ways that we can do that. We can count um, using the grid as kind of a number line, or we can take the absolute value of the uh, points that are different. So uh, B is going to have a negative 2 that C also has. So we can take the absolute value of 3 and the absolute value of 1 and add them together to find out the distance they are apart. Because what these two numbers are are going to be counting across the x-axis if we are counting. So if you get the idea, uh, idea behind this, you can actually do this without drawing a picture. Um, that would give us an answer of four for this. If we were counting across, again, that checks out one, two, three, four units. Number four. <clears throat> this one, we can, I'm going to borrow this section here uh, to show you how this one works. So if we have a point at one, one, we have a point at four, one, negative four, negative one, or excuse me, negative four, one, we're going to have a point at 1, negative 4. Our last point should be the only option we haven't used yet. So let's figure out what that is. So I think I accidentally said it. So negative 4, positive 1 is one of our options. 1, negative 4 is one of our options. 1, 1 is one of our options, which means our last option is negative 4, negative 4. And that does, in fact, give us a square. Number six, explain how you would find the last vertex. So what we have is we have a 2, positive 2, for value of x. So two of our points are going to have to have an x value of 2. Two of our points are going to have an x value of negative 1. So if I use the same picture, I can kind of show you uh, using a different color. So I can do positive 2, positive 6, and that actually will I'll need to move up a little bit. That would actually put us just above here. I will have a value that's going to be um, negative 1, positive 4. And that one would go there. Going to have a value that's going to be negative 1, positive 6, which would go here. And that means my last part has to have the numbers that we don't have yet twice. So I've already got two 6s. I've got a 4 here, so I should get a 4 for here because it's going to be directly across from here and I only have one two for my value of x so that means that that point should go there. Now as far as explaining it in words um, the easiest way that I would try to say how to explain how to find it um, would be to understand that we are going to use each value of x and each value of y two times. So we can figure out that we have to use two for the x and we have to use four for the y to get our last point. So hopefully that idea makes sense. Um, this is one of those things that if we were working at school, um, I would probably spend about 20 or 30 minutes just going over that particular idea so it makes sense. Another way that I could explain it 
is to do what I've done here on the back. So you can always draw a little freehand picture. It doesn't have to be perfect. It will give you an idea of what you need to do to finish. So for number one on the back, here are my three points that are given. And what do I need to do to have Q give us a parallelogram? Well, to start with, it's going to have to be in line with this. So my Y value is going to have to be negative one. Now the starting number we can use by finding a relationship between this. So this particular point is one point to the left of this point. So if we go over here, this point should be one point to the left of where this point would go. And that would give us our parallelogram. If it ended up in a different spot, then we would not have parallel lines here and here. So if I were to go ahead and try to draw that part in, these two lines are going to be parallel to each other. And, oops, I don't want to use that pen. We'll use orange. And these two would also be parallel if they were drawn perfectly straight. This one worked out much better than this one. Um, so even adjusting for trying to freehand draw the scale and so forth, um, what we're going to end up with is a uh, 5, negative 1. So we've used 3 twice for this. Um, we are not going to be able to rely on the x-axis for exactly where the points will go. Um, well, we can. Um, so we have a 5 here, so that means we have a 4 here. We have a negative 2 here, which means our other one should be negative 1, and that's what we do end up getting. So negative 1, negative 1 would be our last point. Um, for this one, we just have to say, what is the best way to classify this? So again, you can freehand draw. It doesn't have to be perfect. What it looks like is we have two parallel lines here. So I will use, um, actually I'll use black for those. So here's parallel line number one, and that line is parallel with this line. These two lines are not parallel. One of them is going to be pointing inward in relation to the other. So that means we end up having a trapezoid. We have two bases of different lengths, and then we could find the shape of the area by figuring out the height. So this would match our um, trapezoid that we were working with uh, from earlier lessons. So I'm just going to abbreviate um, trap. Actually, I'll just go ahead and spell it. <laughs> All right, so um, that is what we are looking at for today. So if you have any questions, um, after watching that, please feel free uh, to go ahead and post in the comments. Again, sorry, it's a little bit longer video, even trying to preload some of the stuff, um, trying to explain it in a way that might make sense, um, especially if you rewind it and go back and listen to it again. Um, if you guys need to see more examples of how these um, kind of tricks or tools that I'm teaching you to work with to be able to figure it out without drawing, um, work. I can give you uh, some extra practice with that um, in the form of just like doing some extra questions and making an extra video. And I'll just uh, post it in Google Classroom. It won't be a listed video or anything like that that you guys can watch if you want to see some extra practice with uh, kind of the problem solving part of figuring out what the other uh, numbers could be um, using the relationships um, that they, we should have for different shapes. So um, tomorrow you have your uh, Zoom meeting uh, from 9 to 11. I am going to open that up to all four classes um, and uh, we will have a new lesson on Thursday. So again, if you have any questions over, over the homework stuff, please feel free to post in Google Classroom. I'll be happy to answer this for you. Have a great day and I will see you tomorrow.